G'day, I'm Guy Allen. This gadget I'm sitting on today is Chieftain Tourer. We're talking about $36,000 on the road. So, what comes in the tin? Well, Indians V-twin, 1811cc, claiming about 80 horsepower in that sphere. It's modelled to look a little bit like the 1947 Springfield engine, fuel injected. It's very much a modern power plant. It's quite a decent lump of metal broad spread of power, good low down, really good mid-range, not so much up top. This thing runs out of breath at about 170 or so. Give it a little bit of time, it'll get to 180, but that pretty much pulls it up. Some of the things I like about it, it's got ABS and it's got cruise control. And if you've never used cruise control on a long trip, trust me, it's a wonderful thing. Fuel consumption, you've got about 21 litres in the fuel tank and it burns it up at about 15 kilometres per litre or even a little bit better than that. That in effect gives you a range of over 300 kilometres. There's no need to run out of fuel. A trip computer has many functions, one of which tells you how far you've got left to go. Very handy little feature. You've got lots of gizmos on board. Uh, you've certainly got a stereo system there, radio. It's also fitted with Bluetooth, so you can run your MP3 player through it. Luggage consists of two saddlebags. They're not huge and they're top loaders. There is an accessory top box for these, and this particular bike has been fitted out with a pillion backrest and grab handles, which I would see as absolutely necessary on this bike. It's really uh, a little inadequate for two people without that accessory on board. It's also got the Stage 1 mufflers, which makes it a bit louder. It's not raucous, but it's certainly got a note to it. Most people seem to like it. Uh, it also claimed maybe a tiny bit more power out of it as a result. These machines, built by Polaris, of course, uh, engineered and got up and running in an incredibly short space of time. The weird thing with this particular range is the Classic Chief Vintage, the, effectively the naked bikes, have a longer wheelbase and a more raked out front end than this bike. Polaris' explanation of that is this bike actually has the steering geometry they wanted, which is a bit more flickable and nimble, but the rake just didn't look right on the naked bike. But they felt with the fairing on the Chieftain they could get away with it. The end result is this bike's also jacked up a little at the rear. It's got a longer rear shock, so you've got more cornering clearance and a more nimble chassis than you have in the naked bikes in the range, weirdly enough. As an on-road package, it's surprisingly agile for a big 370 kilo plus motorcycle. It turns in quite happily if you give it a bit of English through the bars and it holds its line very well. I eventually managed to get a little bit of a weave out of it, but I have to say that was in pretty extreme circumstances that really would have had a lot of other touring equivalents tied comprehensively in knots. So what I'm saying is this is a very, very trustworthy chassis. The brakes are pretty well what you'd expect cycle touring motorcycle these days. They've got reasonable feel, they've got a decent amount of power, and of course you've got the safety net of the ABS. One last item, this electric windscreen. It goes up and down, that's in full height at the moment, but if you roll it down, uh, in its present position I have to look through it, but if you roll it all the way down, I can see over it. It allows for a number of different height people. I actually really like the fact you have to look through it, it gives you a nice sort of bubble of air around you means you can also hear your music. Okay, as an overall package, pretty solid value for money in today's market. The big Luxo Touring, Tourer or Cruiser, mid-30s is about what you're going to end up paying. So in that environment, uh, these are well worth looking at.